Good morning. My name is Richard Dixon. I'm the Associate Pastor, Minister of Music, and Senior Adults at the First Baptist Church of Jefferson, Georgia. I was scheduled to uh, preach the sermon this morning at the church uh, as our pastor was out of town, but uh, we all, uh, because of the snow that came last night and this morning, our church service was canceled. So I thought I would check out this uh, new technology and see if I could uh, perhaps still present this sermon, which is most appropriate for this day, Sunday, December the 26th, 2010, the day after Christmas. So this is what I'm going to try to do. Now I had a great opening paragraph, but it, uh, or at least I thought it was great, but it had to do with being in church today. And since none of us are, it may seem a little odd, but I'm going to use it anyway, and then I'll insert a few extra comments. The sermon for today was, What's the Point? And it's based on the passage from Hebrews chapter 2, primarily verses 5 through 18, but it also reaches back into those first uh, four verses as well. So, uh, here, here's the today's sermon, What's the Point? Based on Hebrews 2 verses 5 through 18. Why have we gathered here today? Why didn't we stay home like so many? Couldn't we have enjoyed sleeping in? Why, it's the day after Christmas. Families are in, the children are playing, and there is so much to do. For crying out loud, it snowed last night, and there is ice on the ground. Well, we're all not at church because there is snow and ice on the ground. But uh, this could also be true of any given Sunday. On any given Sunday of the year, there are so many things to do, so many distractions, so many things to keep us out of the church. So why do we gather? What's the point? It is interesting that so much of the world is comfortable with this baby in the manger. I've noticed over these last few weeks that even the secular world has climbed aboard this wagon, singing the songs of the good news that Christ the babe is born. Joy to the world! So what's the point of Christmas? When we look at the text of Hebrews 2, we find that the Lord announced the message of His great love and salvation. So great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. Verse 3. He did this through the testimony of men, saying, It was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God himself also did this through his great works and even the power of his own spirit. In verse 4, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. But Christmas, Christmas is about God's Son. True enough, man was created by God and placed in authority over all of God's earthly creation. Unfortunately, the fulfillment of the subjection of all things does not belong to mankind. As verse 9 reveals, that place belongs to none other than the Son of God, Jesus. He is the one who truly is crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death that he endured. The Lord Jesus is the captain, the leader, the author, who, though perfect in every way, was through his suffering made into the perfect fulfillment of all of God's will and purpose. More importantly for us today, the day after Christmas, is the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, came to identify with us. Those whom he has sanctified, he willingly and unashamedly calls his brothers and sisters. Verse 11 speaks to this, For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. And with us he shares flesh and blood. God in Christ Jesus actually and in reality became a human being to share with us the triumphs and trials of life. I am reminded of the story that Paul Harvey shared each Christmas each year at Christmas time, the man and the birds. In this story, we meet a good and decent man who just found it hard to believe in all the incarnation stuff that was proclaimed at Christmas. 
and who was tired of acting as a hypocrite. So on this particular Christmas Eve, he chose to stay at home instead of attending the church service with his wife and children. As he sat and read his newspaper, he heard thuds against the window pane and went to discover a flock of birds who, in their attempt to escape the wintry storm that had arisen, had tried to fly in through his window. He realized that stuck there in the cold, they could easily freeze to death, and he decided to try to get them into the safe, warm barn. However, everything he attempted only seemed to frighten them. Finally, in desperation, he exclaimed, If only I could be a bird! At that moment, the incarnation made sense, and he fell on his knees in repentance. He realized that Christ had become man to lead us to safety. However, the scripture reveals to us that the story is even better than that. Not only did Christ show us the way to safety, but he also died that we might have so great a salvation. Jesus not only shared our flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This is in verses 14 and 15. Then in verse 16, we are reminded that Jesus did not do this for the sake of the angels, but for those who are descendants of Abraham, the children of promise. By becoming like us, the very Son of God was able to not be a God who did not understand the lives we have to live, but a high priest who with mercy and faithfulness could identify fully and completely with us all. And through his identity as high priest, he was not only able to deliver the Lamb of Sacrifice, but to become the very sacrificial Lamb who could satisfy fully and completely God's wrath against sin, and most especially, our sin. Because Jesus was tempted and suffered as a human being, He is fully able to come to our aid. So what is the point? Well, as noted earlier, much of the world is quite content to celebrate the baby of Bethlehem. But when it comes to the Christ of Calvary, the celebration ends abruptly. It is so much more comfortable to leave him in the manger. Knowing that Jesus, who is crowned with great glory and honor, chose to come and identify fully with us, his creation, and in that identity to offer his life as the perfect sacrifice for our sin, are we, like the world, just as willing to leave him as a baby in the manger? Do we allow ourselves to drift like a ship which has been loosed from her moorings from the truth which we have heard? Have we become casual or careless with our faith, neglecting so great a salvation? Will we, his people, also leave him in the manger, or will we crown him the Lord of all our lives? So today, this week, this coming new year, what will we do? The choice is yours. For you see, that is the point. Father, forgive us for letting you become just another part of our lives. A Christ that we adore at Christmas, but a Christ whom we fail to seek and serve with so much of our lives. Help us to willingly and joyfully recognize your Lordship and your sacrifice for us. Be to us our point for living. In Christ's name. Well today, I want to share with you that we at First Baptist Church of Jefferson, Georgia, try to be a church, desire to be a fellowship of believers who allows Christ to be alive and at work with us and through us. If your life has drifted away from God's call on you or you have become neglectful of Christ's sacrifice, we invite you today to come back to Him. If you'd like to be a part of a church that seeks to make Christ Lord of all we do, then we invite you to come and join our fellowship. 
And if you have neglected to ever experience the sacrifice that Christ made for you, then we invite you to come in repentance for your sin and receive the gift of grace that He offers to you today. Thank you so much for your time. Again, my name is Richard Dixon, Associate Pastor, Minister of Music, and Senior Adults at the First Baptist Church of Jefferson, Georgia. You can contact us at fbcjefferson.org. That's fbcjefferson.org. And we would love to hear from you. We'd love to see you. God bless you on this day after Christmas, December 26, 2010.